Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're so glad that you're here to worship with us today. Today, I know it's not Christmas yet. We have Christmas coming up in a few days, but today is actually the Sunday before Christmas. And the Sunday before Christmas usually is a One in Christ Church worship because it's the day that we have, as a church, a Christmas celebration. And um, we do have our own Christmas worship on Sunday morning as well. And um, just so that I know that we've been announcing that we'll, it'll be like our schedule that we normally have on Sundays. Actually, there's been a change to that. We've decided to change that into a One in Christ Church worship, and that's going to be entirely virtual, right? So that'll be on our YouTube channel. Please do not come to church. Um, but please do worship with us. Over these past few weeks, we have been worshiping, and we've been kind of thinking about what effect, what impact has Christ had on us? Right? What is it that Jesus has done when he came when he was born 2,000 years ago, and then when he was laid in a manger, like what is it that Jesus had done? And last week we talked a lot about joy. Today I want to talk about peace. Um, when we think about the word peace, and it comes to us, you know, the passage that we're going to be sharing about is the same passage that we kind of talked about last week as well from Luke chapter 2. It says, there, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Remember that? Today in the town of, Beth in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This is to be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Then the angels had left them and gone into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I want to focus on these words. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. It's a word, it's a passage that we have heard probably many times. Probably every year as Christmas approaches, it's, a, it's something that we hear all the time. But you know what? We don't really focus too much on that word peace. When God promises peace on earth, it really is something that's miraculous. Because when we talk about the word peace, we know that we're using the word shalom. The word shalom does, means a bit more than an end to wars, right? The word shalom means wholeness or completion. Another way to understand the word perfection. right? And so when, we, when it says the word on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests, it's something far greater than just, okay, I feel at ease. Right? There's a huge difference between being at ease and feeling peace. There are moments in life where we feel as though everything is falling into place and we finally feel at peace. But the truth is, even in those moments, because of our sinful nature, there is no true peace. You see, the reason why I say that is this. As you know, we have been um, preparing for our big move now. You know, we've been, I've been sharing about this. And um, so now that we've bought this place and, like, you know, everything's falling into place, we, um, we, we've got people helping us out in, in terms of, like, preparing the house for us to move in. The other day, my wife woke up and said, I had the worst nightmare. I said, what happened? She said, I dreamt that everything in our house was gone. I said, we have nothing in the house. She said, yeah, but everything that we put in, like our storage stuff and stuff like that, we put in the basement. She said, all of it was taken. I said, no one wants that. But the funny thing is, even though at that moment when everything was falling into place, there's still this uneasiness. Because we know that we live in a fallen world. We live in a place where there's sin. 
And so we don't know what could happen. We don't know what might happen. And that uncertainty of life causes there to be a lack of peace. And so when he says to us, on earth, peace, it's a miracle that he's talking about. Because I realize the reason why we feel anxiety is because we would like to. It's if it were possible, we would like to control our circumstances as much as possible. Right? It, we do our very best to do that. Right? We put our seatbelts on in the cars because we want to control our circumstances. We stop at every stoplight and stop at every stop sign because we want to control our circumstances. Or we do our very best in everything that we do to try to control the safety of our lives and the safety around us. But the problem is, there is no true control. Right? We are hearing stories about this all the time. People who have been following all the safety guidelines of COVID, right? keeping six feet distance, wearing masks, and doing everything that they're supposed to do, and yet still somehow contracting it. We do everything right. We do everything we're supposed to do, but there is no control. Because we are mere people. We don't have control. But peace is still something that is promised to his people on whom his favor rests. And it reminds me of this passage in Jeremiah 29, 11. I know you probably know it by heart because you love this passage. I love this passage too. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And the reason why we love this is because it's a promise that God gives us that tells us, even when you are not in control, I am in control. Even when you are uncertain of what will happen, God is saying, I know what will happen. And that's the reason why you can have peace. But we live in this fallen world. So when I was a senior in college, I was gifted a car for my brother-in-law. It was an 87 Camry in this dirt brown color. This was 1999, so it was 12 years later. It's a 12-year-old car. It had a lot of miles on it. And this car, actually, this car in this picture is a lot better shape than my car was because there was rust along all the rear wheels, wheel wheels. Uh, it was, my friends called it rusty. No one ever wanted to ride in it because they were embarrassed to be in it. Um, and especially if it was raining outside, the passenger's clothes would get dirty from the upholstery. Uh, it was a messed up, nasty car. But I loved it because it was my first car and it was my car. And then I graduated and I just remember like trying my best, I would like, give it car washes, trying to avoid the rust part so that it wouldn't break off in spots. Uh, that was my car, and I loved it. You know what happened to it? It got stolen. Like, who is stealing this car? Like, why would you steal this car? Like, why in the, what, what are you thinking? And I remember it being stolen. I lived in the Bronx, and that might explain something, right? But, you know, it, I'm like, I remember coming up there going, no way. Like, did it get towed? Like, who would, why would it not be here? Like, the thought of it being stolen did not even occur to me because why would anyone want to steal this car? You know why? Because we live in a fallen world. Because even though it's not supposed to happen, things like that happen. You know, lately I've been watching, whenever I have time, I've been watching this show on Netflix called Rotten. And it kind of talks about like food sources and where the food that you eat comes from. I know there's a lot of documentaries on that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, there are a couple of things that really stood out, like water, bottled water, and how these huge corporations come into small towns and just devastate them because they steal their public water. Things like chocolate and literal child slaves that harvest the cacao pods. 
and watching those things, and I think to myself again and again, that's not supposed to happen. This is not the way it's supposed to be. And so when the Lord gives us this promise that he tells us, look, we live in this fallen world and everything is not the way it's supposed to go. But here's a promise. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. He says, look, I'm giving you peace. In a time where, in a world where peace is impossible, I'm giving you peace. In a world where everywhere you look, greed is being lived out. Everywhere you look, selfishness is being lived out and sinfulness is being lived out. When things are spiraling out of control and all you feel is anxiety, I'm giving you peace. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The reason that we have peace is in that word right there. Emmanuel. God with us. Because of the promise that God has given us that he is with us. It enables us to actually go about our lives with peace. That we can surrender the control of our lives and say, God, I'm giving myself up to you. I'm allowing you, Lord God, to control me. So that when we lift up our arms in worship, what we are saying is, God, I surrender to you, Lord. Because when I try to control my life, And I came to the realization that I I was not able to. My life was filled with anxiety. But when I surrendered, when I let go and I actually trusted you, God, suddenly peace comes upon us. Where there was once anxiety and fear, now God pours out upon us The ability to have peace because we know that God is with us. These prophetic words in Isaiah really have been giving life to me. As I studied, I've been preparing for these Christmas messages. Keep coming back to Isaiah. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. And from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him and the spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel, of might. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. This word is a prophetic word about who Jesus is and what he is doing. The shoot that that comes from the stump of Jesse. Jesse being the father of King David and Jesus being his descendant. The fulfillment of this prophecy. It continues. The wolf, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. Amen. Let me tell you why this passage is important. I'm sure as you read it, you're like, wait, does it make sense? It doesn't quite make sense, does it? A wolf will lie down with the lamb. A wolf is a natural predator of sheep. Right? If you remember, like a long time ago, we used to watch the Looney Tunes. At least I did, right? And they used to have this wolf, right, that would, or the coyote that would be deliberate about trying to eat the sheep, and then there would be the guard dog, the sheep, the sheep dog that would protect it. Remember that? Uh, they're natural predators. And yet here we are in this passage telling us they will lie down together. They will be together at peace. You know what he's saying? 
There was once a time when in God's creation, everything was at shalom. Everything was at peace. Everything was as God designed it to be, together, complete, whole, and perfect. And there was no death. And then Adam and Eve ate of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And suddenly there was a separation between God and man. And a separation between man and wife. And a separation within all of creation. So that now... Rather than food and providence coming naturally and freely, it, man now needs to work and toil for it. He needs to labor for it. Animals now are at war against each other. And when we say that the world is at war, we're not just talking about human beings, but now predator and prey. There's destruction and death that came into this world because of sin. And yet the fulfillment of this prophecy is telling us there will be a day when there are no longer predator and prey. But now, peace. Amongst animals that would naturally be enemies. Now there is peace. And let me tell you the reason why that's important. Because that means that we would no longer have to be afraid. We would no longer have to live in fear. Because in some ways, we are like sheep among wolves. Remember that passage? For I send you out as sheep among wolves. And yet here is Jesus saying to us, the wolf and the lamb will live together. He's saying that we would be able to be at peace in this world. That we'd be able to go about this world without the fear of what might happen to me, but with the comfort of knowing that the Lord has restored all things. That's what Jesus has done. The reason why peace is so important is because the disruption of peace is what happened at the fall. And the restoration of peace is what Jesus is promising through his death and resurrection. So that even though in this world it feels like an impossible thing, God's promise to us is peace. And so he says in John 14, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. Jesus tells us that he's giving us peace, that he's leaving his peace with us. The way for us to experience that peace, the way for us to live out that peace is to be in surrender to God, to allow ourselves to stop controlling our destiny, but giving God our yes and amen. Right? It's giving God our obedience to say, Lord, however you're leading my life, whatever it is that you're doing, God, I'm willing to say yes to you. I'm no longer going to control my own destiny, God. But I'm going to trust in you. Some of us really need to hear those words with so much anxiety going on in this world right now because of COVID, because of our financial issues, because of whatever else it, there might be. You know, some of us are struggling physically, battling some, some sort of illness or disease. Some of us are struggling emotionally, feeling so lonely. 
feeling at war within ourselves. Some of us are filled with anxiety, with uncertainty and fear. We rejoice in the coming of our Lord Jesus because he is the Prince of Peace that was promised. Emmanuel God who is with us. And he tells us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. What he's saying is, the world tries to give us peace by telling us everything is going to be okay. The world tries to give us peace by providing some material security for us. But ultimately, there is no peace because everything is outside of our control. But we can find true peace when we turn to the one who's in control. You in your heart can find peace. If there is unrest and burden and struggle in your heart, today you can find peace. Not because the circumstances around you will change, but because the master of your life will change. Today you have that choice. For the Lord is calling to you now to put your faith and your trust in him by surrendering. By surrendering. Letting go. And asking the Lord to control. Let's come together in prayer.